Welcome back to Business Analytics for Decision Makers. Today we're going to introduce forecasting and regression. Our lesson objectives are to discuss why do we forecast. After that we're going to look at the steps to developing a good forecast and then we're going to cover the three types of forecasts we're going to look at. The first is qualitative, the second will be time series forecasts, and the third are causal models. Um, the second and third time series and causal are quantitative forecasts and so they rely on a lot more numbers than the qualitative forecast. And then finally we're going to cover the qualitative forecasting models, some of the major ones that are out there. So why forecast? Well, it's often useful to know the future and that's essentially what a forecast is. It's a prediction of the future. So the ancient Spartans, right, did a lot of forecasting because they wanted to know the outcome of the battle. So when my troops show up and they see this giant horde, they could probably forecast that it's not going to go well, and rather than lose a lot of lives, maybe they should pay the opposing force and look towards a settlement, and they can amicably part ways. More modern, right, we often care about the outcome of sports games, and so you've got red and it faces off against blue, maybe for a nice friendly game of football, and if you've got your fantasy team, you really want to know the outcome to this because you want to beat your friends, or maybe you've got some money down in Vegas, and so you want to beat the odds and come out a little better. And so you'll look at these sports analysts to help make predictions of the outcome of this game in case blue runs away with it. What do businesses do? Well, businesses typically want to anticipate revenue and cost, and this allows them to develop and rise their strategy. Where are we going? Can we change it if we need to? And so this is the traditional forecast that we're going to look at a lot. So what are the steps to developing a forecast? Well, first we need to determine what we want to use the forecast for. What is it we're trying to obtain? Are we looking at predicting the outcome of a sporting event like football? Or are we trying to predict ice cream sales and what flavors we should stock? Once we've done that, we need to identify the items we need to forecast. So maybe there's A, B, and C that are all pertinent to our business, but to develop the forecast, maybe we only need B and C. So once we've identified those items, we need to determine the time horizon of the forecast. So is it short? Is it a forecast that's right in front of us in the next one to 30 days? Is it maybe medium, which is maybe from one month to a year out? Or is it maybe a long term forecast of more than a year? Once we've done that, we need to select our forecasting models. So do I need a board of sports analysts to help me? Or do I need a trusty computer to develop an analytic quantitative model? After I've done that, what type of model I want to build, I need to gather the data I need to make the forecast. So if I identified I need B and C, I need to go get that data that comes from B and C. Once I've done that, I want to validate my forecasting model. So I can use my model to predict past events where I actually have the actual, and I can compare my model's forecast, and what I want to see is that the forecast is close to the actual, and not really far away. Once I've done that and I validated my model, I can make the forecast and implement the result. I can take action on it. So types of forecast. There's qualitative and qualitative is when we incorporate judgment or subjective factors into the forecasting model. And that's our sports analyst boards. They're able to incorporate the moods, the value of the game and a whole bunch of non quantitative aspects in making that forecast. A time series is when we predict the future using historical data. So the data is arranged January, February, March, April, right? It's in a sequential time sequence. And then we can use that to extrapolate, hey, what the future is going to look like. So moving average, exponential smoothing, and linear trend analysis are all things we're going to look at in time series in the coming lessons. After time series, we're going to look at causal models. And for causal models, Right, we estimate relationships between variables or factors that influence the forecasted value. So this is regression analysis. And the best way to think of this is, let's say I've got a house, and my house is for sale, and I want to know how much it's going to sell for. I can probably get a very good estimate of how much it's going to sell for by looking at the number of beds, the number of bathrooms, and maybe the square footage of that house, because all of these causal factors will relate to that home selling price and I can get a good estimate there. 
So what are some qualitative forecasting models? The first qualitative forecasting method we're going to cover is the Delphi method. And the Delphi method is an iterative group process to elicit forecasts. So let's say I get five experts and I want them to forecast what the economy is going to do. So I keep, have them separate and I have each one of them make a forecast. Once they've made their forecast, I bring them together and I have them discuss why they think the economy is going to go up or down and justify their forecast. Once they've had this discussion, they then revote and develop, make a new forecast. And then they can talk about it further and we can step through this again and have them make a second forecast. And if you get consensus, usually that's when the Delphi method stops. And so in this case, our forecast is that it's going to go down. After the Delphi method, we have a jury of executive decision. And so this is when you've got kind of the top levels of an organization forecasting how we think the organization's doing. So if you think of our barbarian horde from earlier, at the front of that barbarian horde are probably the generals. And the generals predict where their next victory will lie and in what direction. And once they make that forecast, that horde heads off in that direction. So Salesforce Composite is another qualitative forecasting method that's quite common. And this is when you have area forecast and we combine them to generate a broader forecast. So imagine if you've got an organization and it's spread across the United States and it's divided into West, Midwest, Northwest, East, Southwest, and Southeast. And what you have is you have these regional managers predict the next quarter sales and what's gonna happen so you can develop your inventory. And so you're going to get reports back from all the different regions of the United States, and you can combine them to make your overall forecast, which looks like sales are going to stay pretty stable. The final, final qualitative forecasting model, which you should be aware of, is consumer market surveys. And in this case, you just survey your customers or potential customers about what they're likely to want in the coming period. So I run an ice cream truck, for example, and I have my potential customers, and I can literally just ask them, hey, what type of ice cream are you likely to buy tomorrow so I stock my truck appropriately? And so if I get chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, chocolate and vanilla, strawberry, I know how to stock my truck for the next day. And hopefully that should give me a good forecast of what will actually be demanded. So lesson recap, why do we forecast? Well, it's often useful to know the future. Then we covered the steps to developing a forecast. And then we covered types of forecasts, both qualitative, time series, and causal. And then we covered qualitative forecasting models in some more depth. And we looked at the Delphi method, jury of executive decision, Salesforce composite, and consumer market surveys. So that concludes this lesson. I look forward to seeing you next time.